Hi guys, did you see the headline? I, I can't remember how long ago it was, a couple of days ago or a week ago. Trump getting us out of Syria. I looked at that headline and I thought, oh, really? Wow, now that is a lie. And, well, look at this. As Trump seeks way out of Syria, new attack pulls him back in. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you caught this tweet. Many dead, including women and children, a mindless chemical attack in Syria. Area of atrocity is in lockdown and encircled by Syrian army, making it completely inaccessible to outside world. President Putin, Russia, Iran, they're responsible for backing animal Assad. Big price. Big, big price. My God. Are we living in Oceania? 1984. That's what it sounds like. Um, the lies. The this this kind of language from a leader of the free world. Um, it, okay, I don't know what to say anymore. All right, um, those Americans who want to live their delusion, fine, go ahead, go right ahead. I, the, the, the lies, the, okay, the chemical weapons attack apparently uh, just happened maybe a couple of days ago. Again, no, no investigation, no investigation. This guy gets into office, claims that Assad uh, attacked his innocent civilians with chemical weapons and he bombed Syria, but there was no investigation. Have we become so dumbed down that the no investigation part doesn't even beg questions in anybody's minds. We just believe all of the lies. We've been believing lies, well, from the start of this country. And now it's gotten to, to a point where it's utter madness that people could actually believe anything that comes out of a president, our intelligence agencies, the federal government, Congressional reference, all we are is lied to, okay? And there are so many people who are very comfortable with the lies because they don't have to do anything. They don't have to do the research to find out what the truth is. But now, wow, I mean, Trump has really brought lying to a whole new level where there it's obvious no investigation and yet he's blaming Assad again again every chemical weapons attack that we have blamed on Assad the evidence shows that it's those quote unquote moderate rebels that we fund train the CIA trained those rebels in the use of chemical weapons but well, we blame Assad and Americans well yeah Go bomb Syria. Get rid of that guy, Assad, because he's a murderous dictator. They just believe it. They just believe it. It's frightening. It's frightening because it allows the unleashing of an evil so great that, well, when you're not living a delusion, you see it. It's clear. But you allow these people who are so deranged, deranged themselves, so psychopathic, narcissistic, to drop bombs on countries whenever the hell they want. They make up their own reasons. They go in, bomb the country. This, this has been, this is the American way. There's nothing good about us. Sorry. We are the evil empire. And until Americans face that, none of this is going to stop. Are you kidding? They are just going to be rah, rah, yeah. We are so great. We're exceptional. We're morally superior. Get rid of Assad. We've got to go in. We have to save those Syrians from their evil dictator. Yes, it's our humanitarian efforts. Oh my God, um, things are really heating up now. Britain and France 
Um, they're standing by for a missile strike, an imminent missile strike on Syria. In a matter of hours, the U.S. US is deploying large warsh warship fleet to coast of Syria. Yes, those tomahawks. U.S. Navy destroyer armed with tomahawks arrives off Syrian coast, harassed by Russian warplanes. Now, um, I don't think anybody can say definitively anything anymore. And I, I don't believe that Putin and Trump and Russia and the United States are, are at war. I believe that that is a staged play that we are watching. I could be wrong, but I do believe that. Uh, they so now. I also believe that World War III has erupted, and it erupted a long time ago in the Middle East. But World War III, if you've been watching the headlines for the last couple of weeks, you will see. Oh my God, uh, the war mongering going on, and so many countries. Uh, it's like we're we are aflame with violent chaos all over the place. We've already had a communist takeover of our country. So no, I don't believe that we are at war with Russia. All of these wars breaking out all over the place, I think it's that staged play. Unfortunately, they do drop bombs, but so when I say staged play, I don't mean that it's not real. But it's like false flags occurring everywhere now. And they want to bring about a one world government. So you create violent chaos all over the place. Wars breaking out all over the place. And eventually the leaders, oh, they'll come together and they will decide we need one body. One body. To bring peace to the world and it will be the United Nations. That is what I think we are seeing. Um, the suspicious timing of the latest provocations in Syria. The US is planning a major strike. Interesting that Trump said not too long ago, we're getting out of Syria when we already have bases in Syria. So we have done that with Iraq. We're getting out. We're pulling our troops out. But well, there are thousands of private contractors. We left an awful lot of troops in. We sent more troops over to Iraq. And why did we build the largest military base in Iraq when we first arrived if we didn't plan on staying? Why did we build bases in Syria if we didn't plan on staying? No. This is not a humanitarian effort to save those innocent Syrians from their animal Assad. This is the United States just taking over another country. Nobody seems interested in asking why the terrorists didn't use or allege to have used chemical weapons before they were on the brink of ultimate defeat, nor why Israel would wait until this very last moment to carry out a feeble airstrike on a single military base that changed nothing at all in terms of the war's overall dynamics. All of this has been taking place in the, in the last um, recent weeks. Yeah. Israel bombed a Syrian base in the early hours of the morning, April 9 with several missiles in response to the latest false flag chemical weapons attack to have occurred in the country. When you don't stop and think, when you don't have a leader, a mainstream media, when you have no one who actually takes a step back, wants an investigation, you know, the way things used to be done, but even, well, in this country, they were so not done because everything was just a friggin' lie, even after investigations. But 
Why does it not beg questions in people's minds about what is taking place? Syrian doctors say they have treated no one from Duma with chemical weapons, uh, with chemical poisoning. This is the area that Trump claims to be encircled by the Syrian army, making it completely inaccessible to the outside world. We can't get in to save those poor Syrians from their animal Assad, who just continually is hitting their, hitting his innocent civilians with chemical weapons. Syrian doctors in Duma have dismissed the rumors they had received patients suffering from chemical poisoning. Wow, voices from Syria. Syria's war for humanity. The Syrian Arab Republic is an ancient, holy land surrounded by terrorist supporting countries that want to destroy it. These countries, in turn, are supported by the U.S. led North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. The secular government of Syria is led by Bashar al Assad, its elected president. Al Assad is progressive and forward looking. The terrorists invading and occupying parts of the country are neither progressive nor forward-looking, and most Syrians are happy to get rid of them. Many Syrians are critical of Assad for being too soft on the terrorists. They have dubbed him Mr. Softheart. Yeah, that sounds... Well, if you've ever seen an interview with Al-Assad, um, Al Assad, it's like you see some man who is contemplative and seems to be rather gentle. His essence is, is gentle. Caesarians so have dubbed him Mr. Softheart. Oh, but he's the animal Assad who's killing innocent Syrians with chemical weapons. Oh my God. <sighs> Assad has earned the support of most Syrians by providing for them, by protecting them, health care and education, including higher education, are free in Syria. Does that remind you of another country and another murderous dictator who was killing his own civilians? Gaddafi, Libya. Now, we are stealing countries. And you know what? I'm tired of making this argument and showing the evidence because that's what I've been doing for many, many years. And obviously... Those who just don't want the truth, they will remain in the lie. Wow, what a life you're living. Before the externally orchestrated and perpetuated war on Syria started, Syria was one of the safest countries in the world to visit. Now that the West has injected terrorists into the country and imposed illegal sanctions on Syrians, the war-torn country and its people are mostly defined. The future of the country is theirs to decide, as per international law, which we violate all the time. And the Syrians will not be colonized. Their defiance comes easily, thanks to the Western-supported illegal opposition that confronts them. None of the opposing terrorists are, are moderate. They slaughter Christians, minorities, Muslims alike. They seek a blank slate upon which to impose their extremist Wahhabi ideology. And they seek to erase both Syria's history and its people. That's what we're doing. Hell, that's what we're doing right here. We're already erasing our history. Iraq, erase their history. Syria, Wow, the lying, you just get so unbelievably overloaded with him and it makes me sick. Iran hit by massive cyber attack that left the American flag on screens. You know, all those cyber attacks, companies being hacked and their clients and their information being stolen. I have no doubt that it's our intelligence agencies doing it. Yeah, they have to 
They have to create the problem, they get the reaction, then they provide the solution. They want a national ID, which will ultimately be the ID number that we use to access the internet. So they keep stealing people's information, people get less and less secure about putting their information on the internet, the government comes out and says, hey, we can keep your information secure. You just have to have this national ID or internet ID number, making it really easy for our intelligence agencies to go right in and steal all of your information. We've got wars all over. America's looming war with Venezuela, what you're not being told. Turkey officially breaks with NATO, refuses to expel Russian diplomats. What's that about? Oh, right. Trump expelling 60 Russian diplomats in wake of UK nerve agent attack. Again, uh, Prime Minister May said, essentially, the only narrative that we will permit is that Russia did it. Russia used this nerve agent. Um, and there's evidence that it wasn't Russia. So, we expel 60 Russian diplomats. I mean, all of this is really... <laughs> Russia kicks out more UK envoys, hits back at other states. Right after, Trump expelled 60 US diplomats. I mean... It's sad. What's happening in, in Israel, in the Gaza Strip? Israel, once again, killing a lot of Palestinians. Huh. Oh, yeah. And we support Israel. Israeli sniper targets and kills journalist in press vest. Obvious journalist. The evil is so out there, man. And it's coming here. Don't you worry. I. This is what the Prime Minister, or the Defense Minister in Israel said. No innocent people in the Gaza Strip. This is the country that we are 100% behind always. There's no innocent people in the Gaza Strip. Kill them all. Now, there are an awful lot of Israelis protesting. And just in the last couple of months, Israelis have been getting out on their streets in the tens of thousands protesting their corrupt government. There's a lot of Israelis very upset about what their government, their military is doing once again to Palestinians, get rid of them all, kill them. Israeli troops shoot and kill unarmed protesters, over 1,000 injured. Last I heard, there were about 15 killed. The evil. We support evil. We take down good. Pentagon admits billions of U.S. dollars disappeared in Afghanistan. Who cares, right? It's your money that your government is stealing. Trillions, trillions, trillions. We keep hearing more and more trillions go missing at the Pentagon. Billions go missing in Afghanistan. Billions went missing in Iraq. It's your money. When are Americans going to get angry? Outraged, you know? America gives murder, murderous Saudi crown prince the red carpet. Oh, God, I'm sorry. The, the hypocrisy... And this country is so glaring. Saudi Arabia, the country that truly does support terrorism, they're our ally. A country with these princes and kings who are just so unbelievably psychopathic. They're, they torture, they kill. And we 
roll out the red carpet for them. Yeah, so those murderous animal dictators that we get rid of and red carpet for these people? Really? Uh, it couldn't be more clear and obvious that we support murderous thugs when we can benefit from them. Oh, doesn't that sound like that pathological narcissist, psychopath? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, <sighs> that's what the United States government and military, that's what we are. So, um, here, 40 tons of chemical weapons found in areas liberated from militants in Syria. The Syrian Foreign Ministry pointed out that more than 40 tons of poisonous substances were found on the territories liberated from terrorists. We gave those moderate rebels chemical weapons to attack Syrian civilians and then blame it on Assad. We do false flags all the time. But no, most Americans love that fabulous, oh, we're so great, morally superior. We are, we're, our humanitarian efforts, efforts are just uh, off the charts. We're just so wonderful. For London, propaganda is an art attributing imaginary crimes to their enemies. Yeah, our Western nations. They sure have proved themselves to be really just twisted psychopathic leaders. All of them. Russia has figured out how to jam U.S. drones in Syria. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? Our U.S. emergency alert system doesn't seem to be very secure. It's an older one. Well, with everything that's going on in the world, all those terrorists, you would think that they would have gotten an emergency alert system working. You would have think that they would have protected our grid, all that kind of stuff, but somehow we just never got around to it. The emergency alert system that blare out warnings during natural disasters, terrorist incidents, incidents or man-made calamities could be hacked or hijacked into sending out false alarms. Well, we all know that because you've sent out an awful lot of false alarms all over. But I find it interesting that this comes out right as, well, the world does seem aflame in violent chaos. War is breaking out everywhere. And we just don't seem to have a secure emergency alert system. Will it work when we actually need it to work? Or will it only work when we don't need it to work? Just wanted to, um, in case you haven't been able to check out what's happening around the world, a lot is happening. A lot is happening. And there's no way that we can get any of it stopped. Not when the leader of the free world comes out with a tweet like this. And we don't even know if there was a chemical attack because the doctors are saying we haven't treated anyone. But yeah, attack and then blame. We're just missing that part in between. It's called take a step back, do an investigation, find out what happened, and then attribute blame. No, nope, we go right to blame. It's how we roll here.